go all the way down on the end. Uh, John Welch, uh, I happen to know a story about you also that uh, you're another one of our Aggie buddies and uh, majored in Ag economics down at Texas A&M, but someone told me that your minor was saddle bronc riding and whenever you and Bonnie got married for your honeymoon, you went to Bozeman, Montana to a rodeo and how'd you finish up up there? Honeymoons and saddle bronc riding don't mix. That's all I can tell you there. <laughs> Couldn't ride them past the end of the shoot gate. So I, it's, that's all I can say about that. Uh, <laughs> the uh, one thing I would like to say while I've got the floor is, is I'm really tickled that I got to be here and, and, and uh, get up on this stage because from 2003 for 10 years I got to run spade ranches and spade ranches and Andersons go way back I don't know John, uh, Rich when did you and Dub start uh, I, I was sitting in the restaurant when when Frank Chapel hired uh, Dub to, to run that experimental ranch uh, at uh, Seymour yeah yeah and so I, we've, I've been, we've been friends I don't know when that was that was a long time ago and been partnering on the cattle on the mule shoe since I don't 79 79 yeah we uh, we we never had a crossword and uh, I, I've really missed him Dub had a sense of humor that just kidding yep and I miss that we uh, the, well right now I'd say it's the third generation that uh, of Spades and Andersons being partners. Uh, Doug Waldrop and Rich and then John and I and now my son Wesley's running the Spades and and although John doesn't realize it yet, his son Clay John is running the mule shoot. <laughs> and, and he'll come to that realization fairly soon. But uh, we, we've, we've done a lot of, we worked a lot of cattle together and we, same thing, we've never had a crossword and, it, and it's uh, been a wonderful partnership. We. I think about all the different cow works that we've had there. One of them, we were talking about this earlier in the day, that country, especially over on the OBs, which is the country that, that's, that uh, John leases, is real brushy and uh, pretty hard together. And, and over the years tried everything in the world to make it a little easier. And one of the most unique things that John did and the one that I enjoyed the most was he hired a fellow there that uh, got an ultralight and we'd, we'd still gather that pasture just like we always did you'd, you'd uh, drop riders off across the backside, and then you'd start coming this way but the ultralight could fly along that line as we moved and if you could get lined up on him if you were too far ahead or behind you could move up to where this ultralight was and and the funny thing, he could come by you, he'd come by you low enough that you could hear, he had overalls, and you could hear his overalls flapping in the breeze as he went by you. And he'd tell you, if you missed something, he'd go back and fly around it until you, until you saw him back there flying, you'd go back and pick it up. But what I couldn't understand was about every 30 minutes, he'd just disappear. And then directly he'd come back, he'd fly it some more. So I asked him when we got done, uh, I said, how come you kept going off? He said, well, about ever so often I have to go back and get gas. He said, this thing's got a gallon and a half tank. And I said, if me and you are ever partner, we're going to put a five-gallon tank of gas on this thing. Because I don't think it had a gauge. You just had the feel that it was about time to go get it back. Wow. We had lots of 